Hey, everyone, and welcome to Hormonally Speaking. So excited to be here in the new season with you. We are covering all kinds of amazing topics this season, including some stuff that we haven't talked much about on the podcast, like what we're going to talk about today, which is infertility, which I know impacts so many women, especially, you know, women that I work with and um, the the age range, essentially, of, of what I'm working with and that sort of post-35 time of life. So I'm really, really excited to speak with today's guest, who is Dr. Kayla Smith. And she is a leading holistic integrative fertility and hormone doctor dedicated to supporting women and couples facing fertility challenges. After overcoming her own fertility struggles using the hormone P-U-Z-Z-L-E, otherwise known as puzzle method, it has been her mission to help others solve their infertility puzzles so that they can get and stay pregnant, have a healthy, happy pregnancy, and easy postpartum. An accomplished author, she also hosts the Hormone Puzzle Podcast, Solving Infertility Summit, and Healthy, Happy Pregnancy Summit. Dr. Kayla's expertise also extends to guiding and inspiring future fertility experts as the lead educator at Fertility Coach University. With vast experience and dedication to holistic health, she is a renowned authority in her field. Join her in solving the infertility puzzle at coachkayla.com. Welcome. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. So excited to talk to you about this because as I mentioned, you know, I mean, I think it's rampant, unfortunately, you know, in our society that infertility rates have gone up seemingly tremendously over the, you know, past maybe 20 years or so. I don't know if it's that we just know more now. And so we're seeing it more because of that, or if the rates actually have gone up. Um, And obviously there's a lot um, of money behind getting people pregnant and getting people pregnant in a sometimes really intense manner (laughs) that they have to go through a lot to get there. Right. And I think they're missing out on a lot of the things that we can do to support our bodies leading up to that process of trying to get pregnant. So I, that was just a lot that I just said, but can we start with what your take is on infertility and why it's feels so common these days? Sure. So it actually is, is common these days. It's not just because we're hearing more about it. The World Health Organization says one in six couples will struggle to get pregnant. And that's my take on it is that fertility issues, that's a symptom that something is wrong underneath. Mm -hmm. So instead of trying to fix infertility and force the body to do something that it should be doing naturally, let's figure out why our body's giving us that symptom in the first place. Let's look at that root and let's heal that root Mm -hmm. so that our body can feel safe and do what it needs to do naturally. And we'll go into the specifics of that here, but there's a couple of things that I think are really driving this. And that's one, the high stress environment that everybody lives in. So we'll talk about stress and that piece of it, all the toxins that are around all of us on a day-to-day basis. So many toxins from what we eat in the foods we eat to the beauty products, the cleaning products, that piece of things. Mm -hmm. And just the food in general, our food supply is so diminished and just so, you know, less nutrients and less minerals. And it's just not what it was when our grandparents were trying to get pregnant. So those things, you know, were kind of the drivers of this infertility epidemic is what I think it is. Yeah, I agree. And I think everything that you just mentioned is also why we have hormone issues. So even if you aren't trying to get pregnant, right, you can really take so much from this episode because it's the same stuff. You know, it's, this is the same stuff I work with my clients on. And I just have to bring up a, a story because I just did a training a couple of weeks ago on glyphosate. And of course, you know, I, I knew it was bad and I know how prevalent it is, but to really sit through a training and understand, you know, A, that it was patented as an antibiotic in 2010, right? And so we're getting essentially low-level antibiotics all the time because mm-hmm. it's in our water supply, it's in our food. It's part of the reason that our food is so diminished because it's a chelator. And so it actually chelates those minerals from the soil, you know, and it is a well-known cause of infertility too. And and so it's just, you know, I I, I think sometimes we can get just not bogged down, but just like, oh, there's too, there's so much. And so Mm -hmm. we kind of glaze over some of it. But then when you really hear these stats and really get into it, you're like, 
oh yeah, I mean, we're, you know, while everybody's trying to figure out a drug to create, to deal with these things, it's like all of this other stuff is what's causing the issue in the first place. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Crazy. So when you work with women, what are, you know, most of them sort of dealing with initially, like, have they been uh, infertile for a while? Are they just starting on their fertility journey? Have they gone through the IVF process? What does that look like? So it's all over the place. You know, I've been in private practice for seven years. Mm -hmm. I've been in health and wellness for 25 years. And it is from everybody that is just starting out and they can't get Mm -hmm. pregnant. And when they thought it would be so easy to do that. Mm -hmm. And and I'm seeing this even women in their twenties are struggling with fertility issues all the way to, you know, now we're in advanced maternal age and we're 35 plus and we're struggling. So it's really Mm -hmm. all over the place. And, and the body is so smart and it's so bio individual individuality, you know, bio individual, as you Mm -hmm. well know, Mm -hmm. but it's symptom of infertility, as I said earlier, will manifest in different ways in different people, depending on that. Maybe you have PCOS, maybe you Mm -hmm. have endometriosis, maybe you have, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's, those are all cases that I've seen and worked with, but um, yeah, it's just all, it's rampant. It doesn't discriminate based on age. Right, right. So where where do you often start when uh, patients come to you? So I'm a big believer in let's test, yeah. let's don't guess. Yeah. So I like to look at functional lab tests and I want to get down in there and see what's going on. And this is going to be looking deeper than blood work. Definitely think everybody should be doing yearly blood work, checking with your PCP, making sure all that blood is, you know, looking good where it needs to be. But some things you need to go a little deeper than just blood. Blood is a snapshot in time of what's happening right when they're right when it's tested, whatever you're testing, whether that's hormones, whether that's minerals, whatever it is you're testing. So looking functionally, it's going to allow you to see not just what your levels are, especially when we're looking at hormones, but how your body's methylating, how you're detoxing, how you're you're excreting, how your body's using the hormones for what you need to use it for. So mm-hmm. that's a big piece of it. So that's mm-hmm. usually where I'll start. I'll look at mm-hmm. the hormones through dried urine or mm-hmm. a 24 hour urine test. Um, I will also look at the guts. Many mm-hmm. people have gut dysbiosis. The glycinate is causing this, the yep. chemicals in our environment. I'll mm-hmm. look at that gut. I'll see, not just who's there, Mm -hmm. but I want to see how they're living collectively. I want to see if you have more good guys than bad guys. I want to see what they're actually doing in that environment. So I'll do a really deep dive into the gut to see if that's compromising things. Mm -hmm. Same with minerals. I love to look for minerals. I'll look at the hair tissue mineral analysis and say, okay, is, do you have a mineral imbalance? 90% of the population has a mineral imbalance or multiples that they don't know they have, which is going to drive hormonal health, gut health, all of that. Yeah. So that's the first place I start. I yeah. guess I want to see exactly what's going on and I want to work to holistically heal whatever issues we find. A hundred percent. And do you end up finding that you do have to do um, like toxin panels, chemical toxin panels over time with a lot of the people that come to you? Sometimes I do, yeah. depending yeah. on their symptoms. I look mm-hmm. at, and that's the other thing that a functional doctor will do differently than your Western medical doctor mm-hmm. is I'm going to look at you as a whole person. I mm-hmm. want to see your symptoms. I want to see how those symptoms correlate with your test results. Mm-hmm. I also want to see, I do a hundred question health questionnaire, looking at your past, present, future. I want to hear about your mom and her pregnancy with you. Mm-hmm. And I want to mm-hmm. hear it all. So Mm -hmm. I'll look at all of those things and I'll say like, this is what I see that's going on. And a lot of times we find, I find so many things that the Western doctors have missed and it's just, it's crazy. Yeah. I bet. Yeah. And, you know, I tell my clients all the time that, you know, sometimes they'll get frustrated and I understand that their doctors didn't test them for these things, but I just remind them that that's not what they were taught. Those doctors were taught, right? It's a, it's a very different systemic approach if you're going to go sort of traditional allopathic versus the functional route, you know? And so um, I appreciate doctors, you know, PCPs that are open to having their patients work with doctors like you and, you know, um, other practitioners to support that process. Because it's like, I've had clients be like, oh, well, you know, can I ask my doctor to test, use this test or whatever, Dutch or what have you? And I was like, well, you can have them order it, but they're not going to know how to read it. (laughs) They're not going to know how to interpret it. (laughs) So (laughs) I don't want you to waste your money there. 
Yeah. Exactly. And it's not those doctors' fault. Like we have some wonderful Western medical doctors and I love what you said. I want them to be open to us all working together. Yes. Everybody kind of has a place, mm -hmm. but also you need to look at that is not how they're trained. Just like what you said, mm -hmm. and they're not looking at healing you They're They don't care what the root is. Well, I shouldn't right. say none of them. Most right. of them don't care what the root cause is. They right. want to give you a prescription. They want to do a procedure. They want to tell you to do IVF. Like, mm -hmm. That's their training. That's their wheelhouse. Yes. And I always say too, like if I have a heart attack, I'm going to go straight to my Western doctor in the exactly. emergency room and say like, I'm having a heart attack. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to ask them to fix my autoimmune condition or my fertility because yeah. that's not their wheelhouse. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you said you've been doing this for 20 years, but it's been about seven years that you've been focusing in this particular area. What made you decide to do this focus? Yeah. So it was my own personal struggle with infertility and mm -hmm. myself going to my Western doctor when I couldn't mm -hmm. get pregnant at 36 years old, and being mm -hmm. told that I need to do IUI. And if that didn't work at IVF was next, I was advanced maternal age. Mm -hmm. And the other side of that, they said, but you have unexplained infertility. We can't find anything medically wrong with you, but you need to do these procedures. And I was like, okay, that doesn't sit well with me. I'm glad we have these procedures. I want to end there if that's my last option. I don't want to start there. So I made it my mission to see what I could do to get as fertile as possible. And that's what I did. I got pregnant not once, but twice. I had my second at 40. And then that's when I went back to school at 40 with a newborn and a two-year-old and started this career. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that's amazing. So it was one of the first things that you ended up doing was tackling your gut health. So the first thing was tackling my nutrition because seven years ago, I didn't even realize that there was anything to look at into the gut, which mm -hmm. I should have. Mm -hmm. I was in health and wellness, but <laughs> that we talk about the gut as much as we do right. now. It's much so, bigger now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I was a personal trainer before this. Okay. And so I was into the low fats, like eat little mm -hmm. calories and work out really hard and intense and be as skinny as you possibly can. And that meant you were healthy. So mm -hmm. that's what I was looking at. So that's mm -hmm. one of the things I think was a contributor to my infertility 100%. was that I was too low body fat. I, my body was stressed to the max. So I was working out so hard. And I remember my mom said to me, maybe you should dial back your workouts. And I was like, what? No, How that was nothing you. to do. <laughs> yeah, I think that's yeah. one of the things that really helped was yeah. when I got super serious with my food. I started eating more, I started eating more fat, yeah. more nutrient dense foods. I cut back my workouts and and I managed my stress. That was another mm -hmm. piece of it. I just, you know, I started meditating and yeah. said like, how can I fix the stress in my life? And yeah, yeah, and so I and of, again, I want to guide everyone who isn't necessarily even on a fertility journey. Everything that you just said is really important, obviously, for your hormone health, right? Our our hormones have to be uh, working in sync correctly for us to get pregnant, but also for us to feel good in our daily lives, right? For us to, um, particularly as we start to get into that perimenopausal time, when naturally shifts are occurring, you really have to dial in these things even deeper. And particularly what you mentioned about low fat, not eating enough. I mean, I'm sure you see this very often with your patients and I definitely see it often with my clients because there's just this deep cultural, you know, belief system that's still in place of, I mean, obviously from the point of view of what bodies, women's bodies look like, but also just this fear of fat, right? And that we have to sort of stay as small and eat as small and all of these things as possible. And that is the antithesis of what works for our hormones, <laughs> Right. We sure. need, need all, we need enough fat to even produce hormones, you know? And yeah. Cholesterol. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Cholesterol is fat and it's the building block of our hormones. Mm -hmm. And like what you said, everything that we're talking about here now, I am in perimenopause mm -hmm. and I feel better than I felt in my twenties and nice. I have no signs of menopause. No, you know, no low energy, no weight gain, mm -hmm. none of that stuff that we're mm -hmm. told just happens when you age and you're a woman it doesn't right. have to happen if you live a clean lifestyle. Right. Absolutely. Um, so how long after you started changing your nutrition and bringing in stress reduction, how, what happened in the trajectory after that? 
Yeah, it was pretty quick. It was yeah. about six to eight months yeah. of really dialing things in. And, yeah. and then also to the other side of that, I got really good at tracking things. I feel mm. so many people don't have those tools. Yes. They don't know when they're ovulating. They don't know, you know, if they have cervical mucus, any of that stuff. So I right. really started learning how to do that and doing it really well. And so I was having sex at the right time. I was flooding my body with nutrients. I was doing the right supplements. And that was like the perfect storm to, to allow me to get pregnant. And then I did it again uh, immediately. So we had our baby, he was about two. And I was like, this took us, you know, it took us about 24 months to get pregnant with him overall with the whole journey. And so I was like, we should probably start trying, you know, I'm getting closer to 40 and let's just start trying. We really weren't ready for another one just yet. We know who wanted a second one. So we started trying and, you know, my body, I never stopped doing what I had been doing all through the pregnancy and after, and we got pregnant pretty quickly. So I had that second baby. He's now seven uh, uh, at 40. Yeah. So amazing. Well, and I love that you're such a, um, a great example of a, it doesn't have to be absolute hell to have two kids that close together at a quote unquote, you know, maternally advanced age or, or what have you, um, if you're able to take care of your body well, you know, I'm sure I'm not trying to say it was easy <laughs> in no, no form or fashion, you know, but, but the fact that you were, you know, really able to do that, have two healthy babies and then be, you know, where you're at now feeling really good too. So it didn't like, I think there's women that are afraid of that having babies later because they're like, how is it going to take me out sort of after that? You know, I'm just going to be exhausted. Right. And that's another thing that we've been programmed to believe. And it's just not true. I mean, and you can have wonderful energy. You can feel amazing. You can look amazing throughout Mm -hmm. your entire life. Even Mm -hmm. as you're having children and you're pregnant, you're postpartum and all those pieces, you can, it's just about laying the foundations and having really good nutrition and lifestyle pieces. And, and that will carry you through your whole life. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. Um, Two things I definitely want to cover getting a little bit more into the stress impacts and the stress reduction that you tend to recommend. Um, I find that most women, they get that stress impacts them but they have a really hard time figuring their way out of that. So what are your thoughts on that? For sure. So stress is one of the leading causes of fertility issues. If you are stressed and you have your sympathetic nervous system turned on all the time, so you're living in that fight or flight, that's going to cause everything else to downregulate. And that includes making your sex hormones, which is specifically your LH, your FSH, your progesterone, your estrogen, all those hormones that you need for pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So if you're living in this stress state, then that is not a conducive state to have a baby. Mm -hmm. And stress can be anything from nutrient deficiencies, like we're saying earlier, under eating toxins, Mm -hmm. it can be, but it also can be your work life balance, your, you know, your work stress, your home stress. So really, I encourage my clients and patients, Mm -hmm. take a hard look at your life and get really honest with yourself. Is there anything here that's not serving you? Mm -hmm. And that might be a hard conversation that you have with yourself. Maybe, you know, I always say you can't probably quit your job, but if your job is killing you, then you need to get a, take a hard look at that and say, maybe it's time to look at another field, another career. That's what I did. I was in, you know, I had a personal training company, but I also was in corporate America. And I was like, I I be in corporate America for the rest of my life. So I took a really hard look at that and left a six figure income to start this company. And so that's take a hard look, what's not serving you. And then if there's something that can't be removed, you can't quit your job. You always joke, you can't get rid of your mother-in-law, but you can (laughs) put boundaries in place on how you let that stress affect you. Put those boundaries in place Mm -hmm. and then always do things to nurture yourself and do, you know, I I know we hear this buzzword self-care, but it is so true. Do Mm -hmm. things every day that nurtures yourself, whether that's standing in the grass for five minutes, going, sitting in the sun, petting your dog, playing with your children. If you have children, you know, whatever that looks like to you, that's going to nurture yourself and your soul, then do that and do it every day. Yeah. And I think people really don't understand how much, even just five minutes of those things that you just said can do for their systems. Because as you mentioned earlier, we're in that sympathetic nervous system all of the time and we need to get into our parasympathetic. And I always say, you know, touch and fun 
are two great ways to get into your parasympathetic nervous system, right? And so particularly thinking about what are things that you really enjoyed as a child and bringing mm. some of those back into your life too, you know, and that could be just like dancing in the kitchen or what have you, you know, but really um, putting those up as high priorities on the daily, because, you know, it, if you meditate an hour a month, it's not going to do very much for you, you know, versus if you take five minutes each day to do some breath work or meditation, that is going to have a huge impact on your nervous system. For sure. For sure. Yeah. And I have my patients do something called a nourishment menu mm -hmm. where you're in fight or flight. A lot of times it's hard to think of what I can do to nourish myself right now. So I'll have them write down like 20 things they love to do. And it can be as simple as, like I said, walk outside, pet mm -hmm. my dog, or it can be, you know, leave for an hour and go get a massage or get my yeah. nails done, whatever yes. it is, but yeah. have this list available. And so you can look at it and be like, oh yeah, I need to do that right now. I so it's really easy to come from that. I love that. I think that's really important because a lot of us have tools, but we can't access them necessarily in that moment. And so to have those written down and be like, okay, I'm just picking this. I'm not having to think about what I'm going to do. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, I also too really fast is I'll set a timer like every hour mm -hmm. and I'll take five minutes you know, because if not, yeah. I'll sit here all day and forget, like, I need to take yeah. a break. I need to do something fun. So I'll set that timer and just get up and, you know, do a five minute thing that brings me joy. I think yeah. that's a, that's another great point because everybody has their phones around them all the time. Anyway, <laughs> you might as well use it in a way that's supportive of your system, right? Set that alarm. Exactly. <laughs> um, okay. So let's talk about the supplements. So I understand that obviously supplementing is going to be individual based on, you know, for example, what minerals you may be low in or, or what have you. But when you were in your process with yourself, um, you know, on this journey towards getting pregnant the first time, what did you find, you know, was most helpful for you when it came to supplements? Sure. So I always tell people, I am a doctor. I'm not your doctor. So as we're talking about supplements, check with yeah. your doctor or your healthcare practitioner. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a handful of supplements that I recommend to pretty much everybody. And these are the foundational supplements that I used. Mm -hmm. And supplements are what they are. They are supplementing a good whole food balanced diet. Mm -hmm. So these are things that maybe you can't get the quantity of food that you need. So you'll take a supplement to kind of supplement that. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's because like we said earlier, the quality of our food, the food supply is a little bit diminished or a lot diminished. So we'll need to add a supplement. Mm -hmm. So the three that I recommend to pretty much everybody mm -hmm. is one, get a good whole food prenatal or multivitamin. Mm -hmm. This is going to fill in all the gaps of the nutrients and minerals and everything that your food is not giving you mm -hmm. because most of us are not eating a great variety of foods. Most of us are not, you know, like I said, the food supply is diminished. So good whole food, multivitamin or prenatal. If you're trying to get pregnant or not. The second thing is a pre and probiotic. I think everybody needs to nurture their gut health. And mm -hmm. no matter how good or bad your gut health is, you're going to need some probiotics to help you. Now, yes, I want you eating fermented foods that will give you some good variety of probiotics, but we're not all eating fermented foods and the varieties that we need all the time. So let's add a pre and probiotic. Mm -hmm. um, now, once you get your gut healed and they're working the way that they should, you can go on maintenance dosing. You don't have to take that pre and probiotic every single day for the rest of your life. You can like what I do, I do a couple times a week just to kind mm -hmm. of give my body support, but yes. I don't have to do it all the time. Yeah. Um, but everybody, if you have gut issues or just in general, you're going to need that pre and probiotic. Um, and then the last thing, if you're not eating fish and a variety of fish on a regular basis, you need a fish oil, mm -hmm. fish oil, EPA, which is essential fatty acids, DHA, and this is going to lower the inflammation in your body. It's going to give you all of those things that you need to fuel your brain, to fuel your hormones. Mm -hmm. Once you get pregnant, the baby's brain needs these vitamins. Yeah. So make sure you're adding a fish oil. Yeah. And if you're eating varieties of fish, sometimes you can skip this one, but mm -hmm. I just find most of us are not getting right. enough good, high quality, cold right. water fish, deep right. water, wild quality. Yeah, right. It's regular. hard to get, it's hard to get <laughs> even like really high quality fish, you know, um, for some people in different places. And so it, yeah, I, it makes me so sad sometimes with fish because it's like such a perfect food that we have definitely wrecked, you know? know. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. No, I'm a big fan of the fish oil too. Um, um, 
Last okay. thing I would say too, sorry, yeah. is um, no, and based on your testing, I would look at, do you need additional supplements based on what your tests has said? If we run some functional lab tests, do you, and, and do you have a certain condition where you need certain supplements? Do you have PCOS? Do you have endo? Do you have, you know, are you advanced mm -hmm. age? Then there's probably a supplement that we need to throw in there. But again, food first, and then the, the foundational three that I mentioned. Yeah. Right, right. That's great. That's a great list. Um, and again, that could probably, I mean, you know, it's, it's a little, obviously you don't need a prenatal necessarily if you're not trying to get pregnant, but at the same time, you're still missing out on some things in your diet. So, you know, getting that support can be helpful. So let's talk a little bit about those harder cases, the endometriosis, especially if, you know, a woman has had to have multiple surgeries, um, the ones that have had IVF that come to you, you know, how, what does it look like starting off when there's already been a lot that's happened to your body? Let's, let's say it that way. For sure. So I would start sim in a similar way mm -hmm. as I would start with anybody. Mm -hmm. I would make sure that foundational pieces are laid. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many people come to me and they've gone through all these fertility issues and maybe they have a condition like endo, but mm -hmm. they're still eating a fairly crappy diet. Excuse mm -hmm. my language, but they're eating, <laughs> you know, fast food, fast food and sugar and yeah. hydrogenated oils. And I'm yeah. like, we got to get all that out yeah. because at pretty much every fertility related condition or even every health condition has inflammation at the core. So we have to get rid of the inflammation yeah. first yeah. and then we can kind of go from there. So I always look at all those foundational pieces and we didn't really talk about this, but my hormone puzzle method really briefly is proper whole food nutrition. We talk about mm -hmm. supplements, stress, mm -hmm. sleep, environmental toxins, love and encouragement, um, the mindset piece. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do first with pretty much everybody, whether you've been trying for years or you're just getting started, we need to lay the foundation. Mm -hmm. And then I would dive in deeper with the function functional labs. Mm. And a lot of times I find things that the Western doctor has missed when we run the functional labs. And I say, well, you're estrogen dominant. No wonder you have endo because it's fueling your estrogen, fueling it, or yeah. your you know, thyroid is compromised. Even yeah. if you've had a thyroid panel through blood, sometimes it doesn't catch what a functional test will catch right. or your gut is compromised. You have, I did this the other day where a couple have been trying for five years I ran a gut test on both husband and wife mm -hmm. and the husband had this crazy bacteria that was killing his sperm. He, he had a sperm test and it said it was normal, but the bacteria was like fueling the sperm quality issue. Wow. So killed the bacteria with yeah. a natural antibiotic. Yeah. Um, and then it, it, he, you know, they got pregnant. His sperm oh. was better and he got pregnant. They've been trying for five years. So, so, yeah. Uh, and that's Hang such on. a good point too. Yeah. Yeah. That, you know, uh, I think we often forget the men, the male component of the situation. Right. And we'll focus on the woman's body and why she can't get pregnant when, I mean, I've been reading that they're seeing a lot more of the time. It's actually the issue with the man. Right. So yep. I third, yeah. Third men, third women, third unknown. So wow. yeah. It's yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that's yeah. really important for people that are listening, you know, that, when you go on this process, it's also a good idea to get your partner on this process mm -hmm. too, right? So that they can clean up their gut so that they can have things working in the way that they need to be working for you to get pregnant. Oh, that story is like mind blowing to me because it's just so it thousands of stories like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so crazy. And, yeah. and what I love about it too, is it's another point for people to understand, you know, we just, we have all of these different bacteria and pathogens in our body. And that's just a reality. Like you can't get around it. I know some people are like, Ooh, I don't want to like think about it, you know, but it's, we have this symbiotic relationship. And the reality is because of our food, the antibiotics, all of these things, you know, a lot of the not so good guys have a chance to proliferate and our beneficial guys are, you know, lowered and that just working on that one component has such a huge shift on so many aspects of your health. 
for sure. For yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, one other thing too, I wanted to touch on is you were saying if somebody comes to me and they've already done IVF and it's yeah. failed, yeah. the same thing applies. We'll look functionally and we'll say, okay, what do we find? Why this has failed? Mm-hmm. And a lot of times we'll find, you know, can we say that's the one thing that did it? No, but this is what I'm seeing is wrong. Let's fix this and see mm-hmm. if this is you know, what's going to work. Mm-hmm. And I've had clients that have had multiple failed cycles come back and either they've gotten pregnant naturally after we mm. healed some of those root causes, or they've gone into IVF again and had a successful out- outcome. Mm. So I always tell my clients, like, if you've d- had failed cycles in the past, that doesn't mean we can't fix things and you might have a successful cycle or get pregnant naturally in the future. Yeah. yeah. So amazing. Yeah. And you know, I really hope that some women that are uh, listening, if they're contemplating IVF, that they're understanding from this conversation that, you know, their their body isn't wrecked, <laughs> that their body isn't, you know, bad or wrong or anything, and that there are these options to go through this process before going to IVF, right? Which we know is super costly <laughs> to do IVF yes, yes. and really hard on the body. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. People like a lot of people we've been taught that IVF is a quick fix. Like, right. oh, I'll just go do IVF when I'm ready. Right. It is yeah. not that simple. It is yeah. so hard for your body. Talk about toxins. Yeah. I mean, they just pump you full of toxins and just things that can cause all sorts of illness and disease. And then it's not a guarantee and it's super expensive. So I'm not mm-hmm. saying for you not to do IVF, but just be educated about what it is, what it yeah. will and what do. Yeah. Yeah. Do and then make a decision, you know, in, in an educated way, not because you think it's just a quick fix. And right. it's not your only option. I don't care what the doctors have said. Like if you still have fallopian tubes, you still have a uterus, you can still get pregnant. Even yeah. if you're, you know, my oldest client is 45 years old. Yeah. I'm working with a lady right now who had breast cancer, is 44, went through IVF, it failed. They told her she would never get pregnant. Like, don't even do IVF again. It will never work. Now she's pregnant naturally at, and she's 32 weeks along with a healthy baby. Wow. So it's just, don't have to give up. Like, yeah, you can do amazing things if you give it what it is. Yeah. A hundred percent. And I also yeah, think that's an crazy. important message for women that are maybe in their late thirties or early forties, and maybe they haven't found their person yet. And they're really wanting to have a kid and they feel that the time has run out, you know, and it's like, no, it doesn't have to be that way. Right. It's like, you can definitely have these healthy pregnancies into your mid forties. Um, you know, and I'm sure even beyond in some cases and, um, that you, you have a lot more control, and can be empowered in this process instead of being like, I have to leave it up to someone else to make me be able to house this baby. So yeah, it's so incredible. Mm -hmm. Do you find with the IVF um, patients that come to you that they tend to need longer, um, maybe because of having some of those toxins in their bodies and everything to be able to get to that point or can it still just sometimes? Work yeah. yeah. It just depends on where they come in at, yeah. how healthy they were before. And then, you know, we do work on natural detox to kind of get some of those drugs out of their system. Yeah. But I mean, I've had it happen super quick. You know, the next yeah. couple cycles that we try naturally, they've gotten pregnant. So it can be that quick or it can be, you know, a little bit longer, but yeah. You yeah. know, it just depends on it's case by case. Yeah. We have to remember the body is amazing. It definitely wants yeah. to be healthy, right? So it's like when you start giving it the tools. So let's talk about some of those natural detox, uh, you know, supports that you utilize. Yeah, for sure. So first is, you know, like we were saying earlier, I like to test. I want to look mm-hmm. at the gut. I want to mm-hmm. see what the gut's doing, what the mm-hmm. bacteria is doing, mm-hmm. if any fungus parasites let's get Mm -hmm. rid of that Mm -hmm. then let's fuel your body with whole food nutrition Mm -hmm. and make sure that you're eating super low inflammatory so that's Mm going to help Mm -hmm. and then i'll do some natural tools you know i'll do i recommend castor oil with fertility massage putting Mm -hmm. it on the abs putting it on the thyroid Mm -hmm. putting it you know pull those toxins out. Mm-hmm. I love to implement dry brushing, activate mm-hmm. lymph nodes, get the, you know, the dry brushing. Yeah. Um, and you know, there are some supplements that we can do depending on if it's like a heavy metal that we need to detox mm-hmm. or things like that. There's chelating agents that we mm-hmm. can use. Mm-hmm. I don't like to start there because those yeah. can be hard on the body, yeah. um, but they are available if we need to use them. Yeah. But yeah. Um, and then sweating, I think sweating. that's another piece 
Yeah. A lot of people forget. Yeah. Use this my favorite. Money. That's my favorite. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. So we just got an, well, not just about two years ago, we got an infrared sauna. Yeah. And it is like a game changer. Yeah. It, oh my God. Yeah. Sit in there and then I get in a freezing cold shower yep. and then it's just like, what my body needs to detox. Yeah. A hundred percent. I mean, I always tell my clients, you know, if, if you can save up and I actually have a, um, infrared sauna blanket. So that's a little okay. bit, you know, more affordable option. If you're, if you can't, for whatever reason, get a, a freestanding one, but I always tell them that's why like Swedish people, uh, are so healthy because <laughs> they have the <laughs> saunas built into their houses and they have forever, you know, and they sauna at the end of the night. Um, because mm -hmm. I really think that, you know, the reality with the amount of toxins that we deal with in our environment is that we need to help support getting that stuff out. And the sure. infrared sauna is the way to just, you know, mm -hmm. you're heating really from the tissues out. So that stuff just comes out so well, you know, and, um, and the cold shower afterwards, I'm glad you brought that up. Some people don't even realize I have to shower afterwards. I'm like, you definitely want to shower afterwards. <laughs> get it off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then and then get some electrolytes too yes. afterwards so that you, because it's going to take mm -hmm. out minerals alongside the bad stuff, right? So you want to get those minerals back in. But yeah, that's my absolute favorite thing. I think everybody, if you know, across the board, if they can do that, that's going to be super helpful with their health. For sure. For sure. And they're not as expensive as you might think, nope. you know, we got ours at Home Depot on sale. It was like $1,200. And I mean, Whoa. I literally use that thing three nights and it's, it paid for itself tenfold, yeah. you know, hundred percent. That's a great yeah. price. Yeah, absolutely. Cause they, Look they can't, they can go high, but yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. 1200 Look at big box stores. Cause sometimes I'll have some on sale. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Wow. That's so incredible. Um, so tell us a little bit more about how people can work with you. Sure. So you can go to my website. I'm at coachkayla.com and Kayla's K-E-L-A. And on that site, we have tons of digital downloads, different freebies that you can get. We have fertility meal plans, cycle optimizing guides. We even have a males, a male fertility meal plan. So check out the website. I'm also on social media. One of my favorite places to hang out is Instagram. Mm -hmm. So I'm at Kayla underscore health coach, as well as hormone puzzle method on Instagram, Facebook, I'm Kayla health coach. And so you can find me over there. I also have my own podcast, which is the hormone puzzle podcast. We're on our fourth season. So check that nice. out. It's exciting. Last thing, yeah, yeah. The last thing is if you are a practitioner or you want to work in this space of fertility and hormones, I also run Fertility Coach University, which is a platform to certify you to be a fertility coach. So you can find that at fertilitycoachuniversity.com. That's so needed. I'm so glad that you're doing that, you know, because in order to get this information out to many more people, it's like, we need more and more practitioners understanding these things. So I'm, I'm super glad that you're, you're training on that and um, just giving people a lot of hope, right. You know, for sure. And we definitely have a freebie to, for, from you to give to everybody listening. So check the notes um, from today's episode for that. So this has been so fascinating and illuminating. Thank you for sharing all of your knowledge and wisdom with our listeners. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, you guys, I will see you next week.